Hi, hello everyone. Thanks for coming. Um, today, uh, in this session, we will talk about a project, uh, what, we, uh, what we delivered, and it was about migrating from WordPress to Drupal, a highly customized uh, news portal. I'm Peter Pony, I'm the CTO and co-founder of Brainsum. Let me introduce you my colleague, Dominika Petrova, who was the account and project manager in this, during this project. Hello everyone, I'm very happy to be here and happy to see your smiling faces. I don't know why, but <laughs> it's a good feedback. So let me tell you a few words about uh, the project. We made Diginomica.com. Uh, it's a tech news portal uh, with uh, quality content and with, uh, without uh, old school advertisement. And uh, their target group is mainly enterprise leaders and uh, business decision makers. So what we did was a remake of a WordPress site which was made in 2013 and uh, we remade it to a Drupal 8 project. Uh, let me emphasize it here that we don't want to uh, make a general comparison between the Drupal and the WordPress as the content management systems. We will just compare the diginomica.com using WordPress and in Drupal. Yeah, so <clears throat> we took these um, topics uh, and, and compared the two systems uh, based on uh, regarding content structure, editorial UI, navigation, image and media handling, modules and integration, performance, SEO, and uh, of course uh, we would like to deliver you some kind of summary and key takeaways. Um, maybe it's time for a small question. Please raise your hands if you ever installed uh, uh, or use the WordPress site, uh, it's not a shame to admit it. <laughs> uh, okay, and uh, please raise your hands if you did a migration from WordPress to Drupal, maybe? Okay. Or the opposite way? Maybe opposite way. Oh, wow. that's okay. <laughs> that guy at the back, okay. <laughs> so, um. <laughs> okay. Um, regarding the content structure, at the WordPress we had two sites, one <coughs> for the diginomica.com and there was a subsite called government.diginomica.com. So we had basically two data databases with uh, two user groups and uh, media. Uh, and in the WordPress uh, there was a huge category tree. We don't know exactly why was it built that way, maybe it was an architectural planning that way, but everything was a category. So during the migration, we did a refactoring also. So we merged the two sites into a single one, the database, databases into a single one, also the users and the media. And uh, we reused the number of the categories in a way that we separated the categories and the tags uh, and the partners and we made the content type of it so the structure is um, easier to overview and handle. Regarding the editorial UI, the WordPress used the default theme uh, which had some advantages and disadvantages also. For example, in the WordPress, I don't know, many of you raise your hands, so probably you know that there are more editing options. You can edit the whole content or only just the single elements of it, uh, which was a big advantage, but uh, due to the big category tree and also many third-party plugin integrations, the page depth was really big. So it was quite hard to overview the page when you were editing it. Uh, with the Drupal, our first decision was to not to use the default Drupal theme. Um, how to put it nicely? <laughs> Probably you know it, so yeah, it's just ugly. So we went with the Thunder admin theme, and uh, I guess it was a great choice. Uh, the result is... Uh, this so on the for you the left hand side <laughs> you see the WordPress compared to the Drupal 
uh, editorial UI. So we made the Drupal uh, interface a cleaner one. Uh, we got rid of the unnecessary fields and uh, just uh, combined the fields so it follows editorial flow and uh, got rid of the niches. The navigation um, was a UX question basically. In the WordPress, um, they had a single level navigation, which was quite confusing because from the main menu structure, which is, can you see my mouse? Yes, okay. So this is the main navigation in the WordPress from where you could get to a landing page, but there were several sub pages of those uh, landing pages, but there was no way to get there. Uh, and there were these so-called cornerstone pages which was basically a collection uh, of the categories. So here you can see that the main navigation is duplicated here and um, there is a list in the VisiVig. How can you get to the deeper level? So we remade the navigation, uh, the whole uh, menu structure and uh, just made a two level navigation basically. So now you can hover on the main menu and there is a drop down and you can get to the deeper pages with the landing page and uh, other categorization. Yeah, so um, regarding image and media handling, uh, we have to admit that from the editorial perspective, uh, WordPress is uh, still better. We went with uh, media, uh, with the core media module and with some uh, contributed modules to boost it to a, a better level, but still in WordPress, the editors could uh, use uh, on the fly cropping and uh, use uh, to use custom size uh, this for images when they inserted them into the uh, Visivig editor. Uh, while in Drupal, uh, with the media module and not the standard image handling, uh, there are still some limitations. Of course, there are also some uh, good points of this because. It, the look and feel is more consistent that they have to uh, choose the editors from uh, presets, image, image presets. Um, there, there were also other differences. Uh, uh, all the embedded media from other social sites were handled in a way in WordPress that uh, they requested for the embed codes uh, when, when the editor hit the save button and this resulted in a very slow uh, save. Uh, procedure. Uh, while in Drupal, we use this uh, iframely service, and uh, this is this works much uh, smoother, faster, and it supports uh, over 1,900 uh, external um, social and other sites. So it will be always enough. Okay. Uh, regarding modules and integrations, uh, this WordPress site was really. Uh, bloated with plugins. Uh, yes, we realized that uh, many of those plugins were missing from Drupal, but some of those we we were able to just simply get rid of. And uh, but some others which were like important, like the contextly recommendation engine integration, and also the Yoast, uh, we had to work on that then because, for example, contextly wasn't available for Drupal 8. Yoast was buggy, so we had to work a lot. Uh, these are the most important ones, uh, what we use. Um, we completely had to port the context module to Drupal 8 and also add some features. Um, uh, we, we use a, also a custom, not custom, it's contributed, but built by us module for grabbing uh, statistic, statistics data from the analytics, Google Analytics API. We had to extend some uh, AMP features to provide full AMP support, uh, so many of these. Uh, uh, at the end, uh, I think the, the end result is much more consistent and much more stable in, in Drupal. Uh, then about performance and stability, there were um, complaints from the customer that from time to time, there were performance issues with uh, with that uh, bloated WordPress installation, and uh, uh, we solved this uh, mainly with two things. Uh, first of all, uh, we find a good hosting provider with a CDN 
which has uh, a good integration with the Drupal cache tagging system, and uh, of course, also with thanks to the a AMP inter uh, integration and implementation, all the pages which are served from uh, Google's uh, cache servers are, of course, uh, lightning fast. So, of course, we did some imp uh, improvements like general optimizations. So, so I, uh, the Lighthouse audits course are better now, but. Uh, I'm really proud of this because this is now covering five months and comparing uh, the five months, the, the, the same period of last year to this year, the average payload time, which is the most important thing because this is like really what the users uh, uh, perceive uh, at the end on their uh, devices. Uh, this this uh, was really boosted uh, compared to the WordPress. Um, so, yeah. Regarding the SEO, uh, Peter briefly mentioned that we had to build a full AMP team, which helped us a lot in uh, organic search traffic, so we managed to increase it by 24%, which is quite a lot. Uh, but to be honest, the WordPress was in a quite good shape uh, already regarding SEO before the migration. There were a few Search Console errors, around um, 300, if I remember well. We managed to reduce those numbers only to seven. Uh, by the time the team got really keen on improving the SEO, so they were just fixated on this. So we managed to get high numbers in Lighthouse in accessibility, performance, and uh, SEO as well. Um, yep, here are the results. You can see that the organic search, uh, it's measured at the same time period as we showed the screenshot about the performance. So within that five months, we got that up, up to 24 and a half percent. Uh, yeah, some statistics. So, uh, we, of, of course, took an open source approach, so when we had to fix uh, something, we filed the patch to Drupal.org. Uh, this way, uh, we filed a patch for content moderation to core. Uh, we had to fix some bugs in the uh, Yoast module about the publication date. Uh, there were, we had to fix some things also in the, admin, the Thunder admin team. Uh, we contributed back this module, this easy Google Analytics counter, um, and we ported the context module to Drupal 8 and extended it. Uh, so at the end, we still use 49 uh, contributed modules, which is not a low number, but much. it's a much lower number that compared to the WordPress plugins uh, used earlier. And I think these modules are in, in a very good and manageable shape now. Uh, we also built eight custom modules. We implemented a full AMP theme, uh, full AMP support. Yes, we our uh, one of our colleague really got uh, addicted to this and checked the search console every night. And this is a weird hobby, but uh, yes, at the end it resulted in a in a, in a very good uh, implementation and coverage. Uh, we use a Thunder admin team, and of course, we built a front end team for Diginomica. So let's take a final look at the summary. Uh, if you see, there are more likes in the Drupal than in the WordPress, but I guess this is normal if you make a site remake, so you tend to improve the original site. So maybe if it would be remade on the WordPress, there would be more likes at the end uh, also. Uh, but one more time, I would like to emphasize that this is not a generic comparison between WordPress and Drupal. It's specific for diginomica.com. And um, maybe the conclusion of this uh, summary could be that with a lot of work, you can improve anything you have. <laughs> <coughs> Especially if you have a good foundation, like Drupal 8. OK, so <clears throat> lessons we learned. Um, during the migration, it's very important to treat the migration as a as a, as a separate project, or at least like dedicate plus one person for the migration. We really uh, made this uh, 
uh, mistake that we we, we thought that uh, it would be great if, if, if the same Scrum team will handle uh, it. Um, migration can be very tricky, and 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 we had to return over and over to the migration, so it was hard to manage. Uh, then. AMP was worth it to implement. It, it also took much more than we thought originally, uh, but it's worth it. It's, it, it doesn't have a, a direct impact on uh, search ranking, but at the end, with much better performance, uh, Google gives better results for, for faster pages, and AMP pages are the fastest possible. So at the end, it has an impact on SEO. Uh, also, it was very important that we took an agile approach and uh, also our client was very flexible on uh, finding alternative solutions, dropping things. So uh, this way we, we, we really had to, uh, could leverage all the power of Drupal and uh, didn't stuck with trying to re-implement exactly what was available in WordPress. Then we found these two uh, providers, which which are uh, which turned to be really good. Uh, this was our first project with Pantheon, and it performed really well, uh, especially their CDN and the Algolia search. Unfortunately, that's also a paid uh, service, but it's very impressive uh, how uh, it provides these, all these real-time um, result pages and search <coughs> suggestions and so on. And uh, at the end, a few key takeaways. Uh, we made a mistake that we thought that three members of uh, our team will be enough for the project, but it turned out that we need more for them. So as the number of the involved members rises, then will the time spent on the project too. So you have to keep this in mind and you have to inform about this your client as well. Then the research and discovery, uh, it's not enough to have a research phase before the project. You need to get back to this with every new feature and uh, just rethink what you have done so far. And uh, last but not least, the client really matters because uh, remake can be tough, but if your client is flexible enough and open-minded, then uh, it makes your life much easier and hopefully or not hopefully uh, but fortunately our client was really open-minded and flexible so here he is also here tonight so then if you don't mind to come up to the stage and <laughs> just say hi what do you want me to say <laughs> We have not rehearsed any of this at all. So look, I'm, I'm going to tell you straight off the bat, we did not want to do this, okay? You know, I've been a long, long time WordPress user, but I was dealing with spaghetti soup, and we were never going to be able to optimize it, ever. And the development team that we had at the time, they were absolutely adamant, we're a WordPress house, if you don't like it, go away. And it's like, okay, fine, we're going to go away. Um, and with this, <coughs> I had experience with Drupal back in Drupal 5, Drupal 6. I hated it, and I hated all of you, because the community was absolutely terrible. So I just that was my, my first problem. The second problem was that one of my business partners had extensive practical use of, of Drupal 6 and 7, I think, and he hated it. So we were taking a huge risk. And, and so the way that we approached it was to say, or at least the way I approached it was to say, if, if my users are comfortable with what you deliver, everything else will be fine. So that, that was really what we focused on more than anything else. Now, to a degree, that meant kind of, in some sense, is replicating the, the WordPress UI, right? But, you know, so what, right? I certainly wasn't going to use that block crap. Um, you know, we needed something that the, my guys could pick up and run with straight away. And um, it turned out to be a non-event in the, in the end, which... I think says a great deal, quite frankly. So that's kind of it, really. Thank you. Is that good enough? Thanks. That was it from our side, and we run out of the time. So, but if you, if this is our, the last session. So maybe if you have some questions, just go ahead. Um, did you use Founder as a distribution? No. No, we only use the tender admin theme. Yeah. Why? 
question, why did you use Fonder as a distribution? distribution? Why didn't we? Uh, we checked, we, we created a, a demo uh, installation and we checked and, and then at the end we decided to, to build so we, we usually try this minimum approach that we install a minimal installation and we install only those things what we really need. And uh, there were some elements in Thunder which we thought that it it won't be needed and it was easier this way. So, yeah. yeah but for example, the paragraphs. So it would have been harder to get rid of the paragraphs than just using the yeah. admin theme. Did the Thunder uh, admin theme work out of the box, or did you have to do fork it and uh, change the stuff? No, we didn't have to fork it. We we filed a patch or two, but it was working. Yes, it's good. But maybe if if, if we could uh, start now, we would uh, pick Claro rather than the Thunder admin UI. But uh, Thunder admin UI is also great, and it's very good that it's like a, it's a, it's a clean editorial UI here. Yeah. Anyone else? How long did it take the project? We started in the beginning of January and the launch was on the 6th of May. Is it third of May? Maybe third of May. Okay. So, thank you very much. Thank you.